Hey, welcome watercolor friends. Glad you're back. Today we got a really fun project. We're going to paint a big old bull with a little puppy. Going to be lots of fun, so let's just get right to it. I'm going to take some cobalt blue. Try not to dip my brush in my coffee. You know, you want to be real careful when you got your coffee by your water for your watercolors because guess what you're going to do? You're going to dip your brush in your freaking coffee. I do it all the time. I either dip my brush in my coffee or my cat drinks my watercolor water. So I've got a, a fairly light mixture of cobalt blue here. I'm going to test it on my watercolor paper there. That looks just about right. And remember that your color is going to fade out about 50% when it dries. So it's okay if you put it on a little bit darker than usual, than, than needed. So I'm going to do a wash for the sky with this one inch flat brush. It's got a nice point on it. You want to try to have enough water to go all the way across your painting like that in one fail swoop. Now I'll just keep bringing it on down. You should never go back, but let's go back anyway. It's not dry yet, so we can get by with it. Let's come on down. It's a nice angled flat brush. It's angular. It's got a real fine chisel edge on it. Makes it where you can really get in detail there in the corners. Okay, so we'll just let that work. Rinse it out. And I have my little rag here to blot my brush on and I also have tissue in my hand. Always have tissue in your hand so that you can, uh, you know, you can wipe things up quickly or whatever. And uh, so I'm gonna just drop some water in here and just let it spread around and make me some nice clouds. It's gonna make some cauliflowers, but you know when you're doing when you're doing clouds, cauliflowers are fun. So there we go. Now I'm not gonna bother it. The number one thing you wanna remember is don't ever you know, always blot your brush over here, you know, on your your blotting pad. That'll help you control how much water you have in your brush. Uh, you don't want to flood your painting, okay? Now, I'm gonna do this tree line here while the sky is wet because I want the trees to slightly bleed up into the sky there. So I'm gonna mix some, uh, some sap green with a little bit of the cobalt blue. I'm going to put the first layer of the clouds right up along here. I'm sorry, I mean the first layer of the trees. So I'm doing uh, wet on dry. We're not doing wet into wet. Well, kind of we are because we're doing letting the trees bleed into the sky a little bit. Let's get a little bit more darker green here. I love these pipettes. Looks like a little eyedropper. You just get your some water in there and drop it on your a drop or two, whatever you might need. Pretty handy. Be sure you homogenize the colors real well uh, so you don't make streaks with your brush. Okay, so here we go. This is the first layer of clouds and I'm going to drop salt in here while it's uh, drying. It'll make some really nice texture in the trees. So you want to be sure that you have the right amount of water when you drop your salt in or it doesn't work. And in this painting, I'm just going to do 
I'm just gonna do table salt. My favorite salt to use is the margarita salt, the heavier salt, the kosher salt. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt in these trees. And I'm gonna let it work, and that'll put some texture in the trees. And you don't wanna get it in your sky like I just did. So, you know, be more careful. Be real careful about where you put it, but we can we can paint that out. I'm just gonna leave that go and see what it does. It's gonna be kind of interesting. You know, sometimes sometimes mistakes are kind of cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the, the green on down, the light color green. I'm gonna lighten it out just a little bit more. I just want it very light. I'm gonna put a touch of yellow ochre in there, brighten it up a little bit. And we'll come down here and we'll start the tree, the grass down here under Mr. Bull. Be sure you homogenize the color. Don't let color be in your brush and then have it streaking all over your painting. I wanted to use a lighter green here because it's kind of a background. And then we're gonna put salt in this too and that's going to create some nice texture in this lower grass. Uh, I noticed that there's flowers in there. So I'm gonna put some different shades of green, just light color right down in through here. Just kind of mix it up because there's shadows and there's just let all the colors kind of bleed together. Just mixing up different shades of green. You want to try to get as close to your subject matters as possible so that you don't create halos around them. Work quickly. The watercolor soaks up into the cotton fibers of the paper very quickly. And if you don't keep moving, you're gonna get all kinds of runs or whatever. Now on this particular piece, right in through here, we've got all that grass. So we do want some cauliflower. So I'm just gonna go back up in here. When you add water into your painting, when, when you go back and add water to it, what happens is it'll create cauliflowers. And in this situation, we do want cauliflower. I'm gonna take a little sienna, put in there with that cobalt blue, and that's gonna make us a nice shadow color. Makes a nice brown. We wanna saturate that real good and homogenize it so it don't See what a pretty shadow color that is? You wanna put that under our bull right. Okay, a little bit of salt. And that's gonna create some flowers in the uh, grass. That's gonna create some really nice texture in that grass. Okay, so I'm gonna blow this dry and then we'll be back. Okay, I decided I don't wanna blow that dry because I want the salt to have time to work. The longer that salt sits in there, the better the, the uh, outcome is going to be the, the better the texture and uh, it'll have more time to do crazy stuff which is exactly what I want. Now we got salt accidentally in the clouds and it's beautiful you know so there's there you go there's a happy accident. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to be mixing up the color the base color for the bull and uh, the larger parts I use my my big brush here it's like I said it's a it's a three-quarter inch chisel brush. 
with a nice sharp edge on it. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna put the first layer of color on our bowl. It's just gonna be a light layer. I'm kind of just, we'll work it wet into wet here. Going around his ears because I need to keep that area light colored. So now what we'll do is we're going to take and put clear water get some clear water rinse your brush real good get some clear water then you want to pull this color up over his face here so he gets a little bit of just a little bit of tint just right on over your sketch. Just go right on over it. Let's pull it right over there. And then he's got a lighter color on his muzzle. So let's just fade that out with clear water. Let's just paint it out so that it just blurs out into white right here down on that end. There we go. I think we'll just go ahead and put some up here in his bangs too. Cover the whole thing. Okay. I'm putting the strokes on here uh, because in the direction that I know that his anatomy goes. Get the hair out of there. If hair gets on your painting, don't worry about it too much. You can always brush it off. Let's go down here and put some tint on his legs. You want to be careful and make sure that your painting's dry, which is not. So if you'll notice, I'm not taking the color all the way to the edge because I don't want it to bleed down into that grass. There we go. So we got the first tint on the bowl. All right. So we definitely have to let this dry now up in here because if we don't, anything we put is going to bleed into itself. And I want to do his eye, but let's wait until this dries and then we'll do the eye. So I'll be back. So I'm going to go to my uh, pointy round brush now so I can get into tighter areas. This is a number eight round master's touch from Hobby Lobby. You don't have to buy expensive brushes, but when you buy round brushes for watercolor, be sure they're real pointy for detail and that they snap back real good when they're wet. So I'm going to do wet into wet for a part of my dog here. I'm going to start with the tail because uh, we want, there's lots of dark colors that we want to, there's lots of shading going on in here. So I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to put the first light color and then uh, I'm going to let the colors bleed together for the shading. Get my brush wet. I don't want it too wet. I don't want to drown the dog. So now I'll just go in here and get the tail wet. Be sure you stay in your lines because if you don't, that water's gonna, uh, the watercolor is gonna follow the water. It's gonna go where the water is. So I'm gonna wet the dog, get his little hip all wet. beyond where I'm working as well because I 
I do want it all to bleed. And when I was tracing this uh, to my watercolor paper, where there's shadow, where, the, where there's shadow, I just made kind of dotted lines, not solid lines, so I'd get an idea where to put the shadows. So. Okay, so we're gonna start with the lightest color, which would be your yellow ochre. Make it real light. <clears throat> I'm gonna add just a touch of watercolor white. Okay, so here we go. Put that in there. Just a thin layer. And it's, I'm just gonna put it all over the hip area. I'm gonna get this area wet with pigment. <clears throat> put the base color. Just paint it on out. Get some clear water, just paint it on out. You can go right over your lines but just stay in the lines. If you happen to have any extra salt that might have spilled over onto your dog or any other part of your painting that you're gonna work on, be sure you get it off. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of that dark mixture that we made and I'm gonna put it right here in the, where the shadow is. I'm just gonna let it spread out. I'm just gonna let it bleed, go where it needs to go. You can borrow paint from uh, different areas. Just gently pushing down with my thirsty brush, I'm tapping it on the blotting cloth that I have so that I can lift some color out where the highlights are. When you want to lift out color, you, you don't want to have the watercolor too wet or, it, or when you lift out, it'll just bleed into itself. So it does take a little bit of practice to learn when to, to lift. So we'll let this part dry. I'm gonna give it a slight spray of water, just a slight spray. That'll make sure we have nice soft edges there, no hard edges. Okay, so now you can see how pretty the salt did. It just spread out. There's so much detail in this area here that, you know, it would be just so much easier to sprinkle the salt and then 
let the painting talk to you and you get in there and do whatever else you want to do with it. So, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead over here and now we're going to work on the leg, this front leg. And again, we're going to do wet into wet just like we did on the dog for that area. And I'm going to put the lightest color first, which will be the yellow ochre color with a touch of burnt sienna. So we'll put a thin layer of that on the leg and then we'll be doing wet into wet just like we did on the dog. You don't want to go outside the lines when you've got color like the grass is here or if it be ocean or whatever. If you go outside the lines you're going to get a color book effect that goes around your painting and that will ruin your painting. So, okay, so now I'm going to add some of that darker color. I'm going to get a little bit of Mars black and mix into it just a little bit of Mars black. Dab some of the water out. Then right up under here where the shadow is, we'll just let that bleed across over to So now let's do this other leg. Same thing. I'm going to paint wet into wet. I'm just going to put down the darker layer back here because it's pretty dark. Start with that. Then I'm going to clean my brush and I'll get the lighter color with just a little bit more sienna in it. A darker shade. I'm going to paint that in. Now I'm painting on a, on a watercolor block. All the, I've got about 20 sheets of watercolor paper here that are glued together on a block and that makes it where I don't have to tape it down. So uh, you can do that. This is Fabriano Aquarelle. I love to paint on Fabriano because it lifts. If you, if you got a painting where you think you might be doing a lot of lifting, uh, 140 pound uh, Fabriano is great for lifting. So I'll put that lighter color here and let it bleed on over into the dark area.
when you're letting color bleed into each other, don't don't diddle with it. You know, don't be diddling. Just put your paint down and leave it. And let it work. So I see a dark area right over here. This is the shadow under the ear. So we'll go ahead and paint that while we're here. Let's put the first coat of paint on the eye. Take your time, don't be in no hurry. I always like to do the eyes first, you know, that's the soul of your painting. You get them eyes done and, and that just, it just helps so much. Now this dark area where the nose is, it's kind of shaded, so I'm gonna clean my brush, put some clean water in it, and I'm gonna let this just kind of bleed out just a little bit so that it'll shade itself going up. See there, see how pretty that is? And just kind of paint it out. There we go. And I'll put a little bit of more concentrated dark right in the very inside part and just let it bleed out. Watch your watercolor, watch it work. That's what this area over here where the shadow is going to be underneath the bull. Boy, the salt really did its job. It's really pretty over here. So I'm going to get this wet. We'll do wet into wet. And put that shadow color in here. I came in here a little while ago. My cat was drinking out of my watercolor water and she was sitting on my painting. Oh boy happens all the time.
So you don't want to drown it, just, you just want it to bleed out. So I'm going to take some of that shadow color, mix it up real good, and just let it, just let it work right up in here. Work quickly. It's a little bit darker over here too, so let's let's do that here as well. Wet and just add a little wet, spread it out. Soften these edges right here. Just paint it out. Clear water. See, I'm just taking clear water, dragging it out now. There you go, it's gone. So now what'll happen is these edges are wet and they're gonna soften out and they're gonna go, you know. So it's pretty shiny right now. I, I, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's pretty shiny. So when some of the shine goes out, uh, we're going to try to pull out some grass. <clears throat> Now you, there's several ways of doing it. You can use a credit card, you can use sharp pencil, you can just use about anything. In this case today, I'm going to use a water, um, sorry, I'm going to use colored pencil and I'm going to pull out some of the darker pieces of grass and then uh, we'll go in and we'll do some other things too. I kind of wait and let the picture dictate to me what it needs. You know, so I still have salt on here. Now in most cases, you take the salt off. I'm not ready to take the salt off because I still want it to keep working for me. So, anyway, it's starting to become a matte color now. It's just kind of satiny looking, not real shiny, but it's not quite ready to pull. If I try to pull now, the when I try to lift, the color is going to run into itself. So we need to let it get just a little bit drier. I'm going to soften out some of the this here. There's a shadow right in here, so we might as well start creating that. And let's add some of our burnt sienna with a little bit of about milk consistency, I guess, not real, real, real thick. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. That's just a little bit dark. I assume this is an ear. I'm not sure. I think it's an ear. Or something. Okay, let's get a little red. A little raw sienna. Mix that up. See what it looks like? Yep, looks pretty good. So we'll lighten it up just a little bit by adding just a little bit more water to it. Tap your brush. And we will go right up in here and we will put the undercoat for the bangs. Just let that bleed right down into that shadow that's still damp. And likewise over here. And then we're going to come about right in here, add a little bit more. It's just a little bit too much water there, so I'm dabbing it up. Let that dry, don't play with it too much. Let's put a little bit of the red over here on the air.
Okay, so now we can come over here while that's drying. We can come over here and we can work on the dog again. I'm going to feel the pa this with the back of my hand. You don't want to put your fingers on there because of the oil in your fingers, but you can feel, and if it feels cool, it's still damp. The cooler it is, the wetter it is. So you know where you can go. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more doggy color here. And I want that to spread out, so I take, clean, clean my brush. Lightly just paint this out. I'm going to pull it forward. Just paint it out, keep the edges soft because the muzzle is pretty light color. We don't really want to keep that light, but, but it blends. So we'll just do that. Let's go up here and just get a little bit more of the darker red right up in here. See, work while it's wet so that it spreads on down. Blend, just do your blend gently. Got kind of a dark area right in here, so let's let that, let's just let this bleed right up in here.
So I went and uh, got clean water. You want to be sure you refresh your water quite often. And I have this water with dish soap in it because I'm going to put some masking fluid where I want some of the hair to be, uh, the curly hair on the bowl. So a lot of times, you know, you can just take and put the mask with the soap on the brush, but I just like to use a little bit of soapy water. You have to be sure that you have soap on your brush when you add your masking fluid because uh, masking fluid will ruin your brush. And if you have a little detergent in there, that'll make it more easy for you to clean it up. So I'm gonna get, I got all my brushes over here. I'm gonna get a real fine detail brush. I mean, really fine. This is too hot. And I'm gonna use that to put the masking fluid on. The bowl has real curly hair, so I think this is the best way to go. So I'm gonna put it in the soapy water had it. Then I've got my masking fluid here. I've got PBO drawing gum. There's all different kinds of names for it. It's slightly tinted blue. You want to be sure you roll it a little bit, get that dye down in there so that when you put it on there, you can find it to pull it off. But don't shake it. Just roll it a little bit. Okay. The shelf life for masking fluid is not very long. It will gum up like this, and once it starts gumming up, it don't quit. So I like to clean it out I'm doing that. So be sure you keep the lid on your masking fluid. Take a little bit and dab it on something and then close your lid. So I will put a little bit on the edge of this. Right here, I'll pour a tiny bit right here. Okay, see there, I've got it on that. And that's what I'll use. And then I will put the lid back. I cleaned that out with some tissue. Put the lid back on there because it will dry out fast. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Tell you what, I'm not neat. I can make all kinds of messes. All right, so here we go. We've got some masking fluid in here and I'm going to try to paint some hair with the masking fluid and I'm going to use this brush almost straight up because I want detail. I want little curly hairs. Can you see me doing that? I'm just putting the masking fluid on here and making little hairs. This is the hair that comes down over his bangs. So I've tried it all different kinds of ways and this seems like the best way to do it. So just paint that hair on there. For the sake of the length of the video, we'll just fast forward onto He's got some that comes the next out. step. Just don't make it look like little. He's got quite a few curly hairs right in there. Okay, so I'm going to take my soapy water now and I'm going to clean that brush off. Just remember when you got your coffee nearby, don't put your brush in your coffee. Don't be drinking the paint. So, so now I got a nice clean brush with no frisket on it. So while some of those parts of the painting are drying, we'll do some negative painting. I'm going to take the very pointy part of my brush. And create some lights and darks. See that I paint in there. This is negative painting. This is really a lot of fun to do. I enjoy this. So I'm going to take the very point of my brush and just create some wigglies and
<coughs> so while I'm doing this, you practice and work on your paintings and then I'll be back in just a little bit. So now we'll just go ahead and add some darks. We'll use our dark mixture that we fixed up earlier and we'll start creating more form on the bowl. And you can see where the paint bounces over the frisket. I'm not so sure if I'm gonna like that or not. So if I don't, what we'll do is we'll do part two and we'll do a video on how to fix a painting just in case that happens. That will make it kind of interesting for you beginners. Uh, I don't want you getting rid of your paintings because you made a mistake. There's always a way to fix them. So just in case, we're going to do a part two. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like where the frisket is. But at least I showed you how to put it down. That's good. So let's uh, create some form here on the bull's head and uh, paint over the frisket there and see if we can create some hair. The frisket's going to protect the painting, and then uh, when we pull it off, the lighter color is going to show underneath. So we'll speed this up for the sake of the time of the video, and I'll see you in a minute. It's been such a pleasure going over this painting with you all. Uh, I really aim this towards the very beginner. Lots to learn. There's a lot of information here for you. So all I can say is just practice, practice. Get you a journal and begin to practice different brush strokes, different color. We'll stop here and then we'll go on to the next video. We'll do part two, which will be, I will teach you how to fix errors, how to lighten dark places, how to make changes. Our artwork is all about changes. You can always fix a problem. Nothing's in stone. So I'll see you in the next video. And thank you so much for watching. And if you would, please like and subscribe. See you next time.
Thank you.